A couple of weeks ago, I repaired the audio output of my HackRF self-rotified radio. The HackRF radio kit I got came with three types of antennas, and I'm curious to see what the characteristics are. And for that, I'm going to use my Nano VN8-FV2 to scan through the frequency range. The V2 only goes up to 4.4 GHz, and the HackRF is capable of reaching 6 GHz. But I don't think any of these antennas are designed for that high of a frequency range, and the Nano VNA-FV2 should be sufficient. I do have better spec VNAs, but the reason I wanted to use the V2 is because its screen has a matte finish and it shows up better on the camera. And by the way, the Hack RF kit I got was a generic clone. As you can see, it doesn't really have any marking on it. Anyway, these type of clones are abundant on the market, and depending on which one you get, the supplied antennas might be different. So these are the three antennas came with my kit. One is a whip antenna, which was advertised as a broadband antenna. We know that this is a little bit of a stretch, as the resonant frequency is dependent on antenna's length. And the highest frequency you are going to get is limited by the minimum length of the antenna. Now, for this antenna, the minimum length is roughly 15 millimeters, as you can see right here. So this one corresponds to a maximum frequency of roughly 500 megahertz. And the antenna won't be that efficient above this frequency anymore. Anyway, we'll take a look at this later. And the second antenna is this Wi-Fi antenna. And the third one is a multiband antenna. All right, without further ado, let's start with this whip antenna. Because we don't want to assume anything with these antennas, I'm going to keep the sweep to the span of the entire frequency range, up to 4.4 GHz. This range had been calibrated before, and if you look at it, the S11 looks flat enough, so I'm not going to recalibrate. As for what we're doing here, this is good enough. Now, because we're only interested in S11, so let me turn off the other traces so it doesn't distract us. So, display, trace, trace 1, trace 2. Now we're left with S11. And of course, because we're measuring antenna, so let me change it to the format to SWR as well. Okay, so now we have set it up. Now let me put on the whip antenna here. And as you can see, we have a notch here. So the marker is already on. Let me just move it in place here. And you can see we're at about 400 megahertz. That roughly corresponds to the resonant frequency of the antenna. Of course, if I extend the antenna, you will see that this frequency actually moves lower. So let's see here. Right now, you can see the first peak essentially is at about only 176 megahertz. And that's because I extended the antenna. Now, let me just retract the antenna. You will see that the resonant frequency went up again. So that's the characteristics of your whip antenna. All right, for the second antenna, I'm going to put on this Wi-Fi antenna. So let's take a look here. And we indeed see two bands here. Now, if you look carefully, let me move the cursor here so you can see what we're looking at. So that you can see the first frequency band is roughly at where the cursor is, is roughly 2.4 gigahertz, and that's the Wi-Fi frequency band. We can move the cursor again to see what was the other band here. And the second band you can see is roughly at 3 gigahertz. And by the way, for an antenna to be considered tuned, the SWR needs to be under 1.5 typically. And this Nano VNA-V4 only goes to 4.4 GHz. And I think for a dual band Wi-Fi antenna, the second frequency band should be right around 5.8 GHz. So this one is not able to detect. So let me actually swap in the Nano VNA-V3 to see if we can find the other resonant frequency here. So I have the V3 powered on. Of course, the screen's glossy. That's why I didn't want to use it before. But let's uh, hook it up. And you can see here. So let me also enable the cursor. Let's see here. Cursor. 
go back marker let's do select marker one and let's see as you can see here the second frequency band starts right around 4.7 gigahertz and extends to roughly 6 gigahertz so this is the characteristics of this dual band wi-fi antenna all right so now it's time for us to take a look at the last whip antenna and that's this antenna with these inductance added in so let's take a look now i'm switching back to the nano vna-v2 and you can see surprisingly this one actually is relatively broadband it has quite a few notches here and there and you can see that we are essentially spanning let's just see all the way up to four gigahertz and going down and it's usable after one gigahertz so basically from one gigahertz to 4.4 gigahertz it's actually working pretty well now the notch underneath here let's see what that is so the notch here corresponds to roughly 264 megahertz and let me change the stop frequency to 500 megahertz so we can see this section in a little bit more detail so let's change the stop frequency to 500 megahertz and typically you want to recalibrate the nano vna but uh, i took a look a while ago and the calibration was reasonable so let's just see what we got here and this is the uh, frequency we were looking at before that was 265 megahertz and also you can see we have another resonant frequency here that is right around here so let's take a look at what that frequency is and by the look of it it seems it's right around 144 megahertz and that corresponds to the two meter band so clearly one of the intended frequency band for this antenna is the two meter band you can see that this antenna actually can be used as a broadband antenna from 1 gigahertz all the way up to 4.4 gigahertz as well. All right, that is pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching and I will catch up with you next time.